Hi everybody, this is Gijs again and I hope you are doing well. At this moment I am on the final stretch of my favorite trail run in the neighborhood where I live. And I did this same trail run about two weeks ago in lousy weather and just after the water that was basically the place where I'm walking now was just left so it was really muddy. I did that trail run to test a backpack and some of you might know that I am a jury member of the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards. I did that video already on the awards and the award winners but this backpack, the IM Runbox Backpack 2.0 was sent to my house to do some testing on my playground before I headed out basically to the jury meeting in Stockholm. When I came home from that testing run, I discovered that I made some really stupid mistakes in the video itself. Because the DJI Pocket 2, that one that's shooting this video, um, I did not put it on the right focus mode. I forgot to put it on face track every time when it was shooting me. So a lot of the video is not really in focus. It's not totally unsharp. It's a little bit off but it's not to my standards basically. So this morning I went out for the same run with the backpack that I normally wear. And during this hike, walk, run, I discovered I should edit this video even though the quality is not that good. So that is what I'm going to do. Because there is some information on this backpack, um, it's designed for people that like to run from home to work and from work to home. Now when I was testing it I discovered some things and now this morning running with this pack from Decathlon, I just bought it a while ago, I see the big differences between them and I think you should know about it and I still think although the quality is not that good it is very much shareable. So now what you will see is what I shot two weeks ago just before the jury meeting. Uh, I hope you all enjoy the video and now I'm going to run home to get into the hot tub and the shower. Enjoy the video! Hi everybody, this is Gijs again and this is not a full review but some of you might know that I am a long-term jury member of the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards. And in the beginning it was all about real outdoor stuff, hardcore outdoor stuff, hard shells, hiking boots, that kind of things. But nowadays it's more about urban outdoor and how we go on in how outdoor is basically translated into our urban life or has evolved maybe into our urban life. Now one of the things that I'm testing for basically this year is a backpack. It's the IM Run Box Backpack 2.0. Um, it's a backpack for people who go to work when they're running or when they go running to work. And inside there is a piece for a laptop, there is a clothing compartment, uh, so when you change into your normal office clothes, I don't know who changes into their office clothes, in, in my world nobody does, but okay. Um, but it's meant for running, so now I am going to run my favorite trail run um, in the place where I live, and let's see how this backpack performs. <laughs> And now what you will see is that my little nice trail has gone a walk because it's just water. And since my laptop, my very expensive one is in here, I'm not going to risk that. So take the other way back again. I quite recently we had some flooding and you see what happens to the trail that I run. It's covered in mud and leftover debris from the floods. Ooh, it's slippery. I'm so grateful to my Essex with the big lugs. Ooh. Sometimes even it's so muddy that my shoes it feels like they're being sucked into the mud and I'm gonna lose them. But that never happened with these shoes. Okay, 
and now we've got a problem. <laughs> because basically, it's that flooded that there's no way around it. I can't swim, I can walk, but it's, this is going to be a very long bypass. So I'll choose a different route and go back the same way as I came. It's a little bit of a bummer, but that's living in the Netherlands and especially where I live. And I love this changing things. And it's even, you know, work and pleasure. It's absolutely fine now. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about the comfort of the pack. Um, you might see it, I'm not sure, but it's quite bouncy. And the fact why it's quite bouncy um, has got to do with the way how to adjust the straps. Let me stop and I'll try to show you this. Look, what happens, let me turn towards the sun. There's a little bit of sun out there. Is that what you will see is that the straps, the shoulder straps, and the chest strap is nice in the middle. But lower, there is this, let's call it a, a belly strap, this one. Um, and the pack, and let me flip the DJI for a moment, because now it's a bit more easy to show you this. I've got a little bit of a different angle. Now, the, the purpose on this one is, of course, normally this would be the hip belt and it would rest the backpack on your hips. But since it is a running pack, um, they made it higher course to give it more basically stability you don't carry that much weight onto your shoulders in a running pack now um, the pack that I'm carrying now the complete weight weight is 4.2 kilos I put it on my scale and two kilos of that is my MacBook Pro and when running I feel this weight it's not it's it's not uncomfortable no it's quite comfortable but the bouncing is not comfortable and when I put straps more tight the only thing that happens is that my shoulders get pulled back and if I tighten the chest strap and the belly strap more the only thing is what happens is because this is right on my ribs that where I breathe if I tie this one more closely to my body to get a better fit or get less bounciness the only thing that happens is, is that I can't breathe and this is really a difficult thing with this backpack on my body I'm small I'm, I'm uh, 63 kilograms from 1 meter 70 high so this is a small backpack that should fit my body but it simply doesn't also the fact that it's got I don't know if you can see it that it's got load lifters on a backpack like this it's absolutely nonsense now um, nice feature is of course that there is a emergency whistle on it and you see me wearing my headphones and I'm listening to Spotify Beastie mode because that's really nice to do a lot of running in the mud way on. It's got a good vibe. Um, but there is this, this pocket on the side. And like so. And you can see that on the top there is this entry level for the wires of my headphone. And that's quite cool. My iPhone 12 Plus is in there. It fits nicely. But it is a hassle because if you want to get into your pocket, and I'm right-handed, it's not on the most convenient spot. It's a very big hassle to get it out and to get it in. Although it's got a nice pulling lip tap. One other thing that I don't understand, and maybe because I'm just not the right person for this, is the fact that it does not have a place where I can put a bottle. Most people who I know who travel for work with a computer, they either have a mug of coffee or they have something like a water bottle that is reusable that they fill at home, they go to work, they drink it there and they take it back home again. On this pack there's none possibility to put a um, hydration blade. It would be very luxurious because that's probably the spot where my MacBook is. But it doesn't have a possibility, not on the outside, not on the inside. And that is something that if you are a runner and it's going to be summer with a little bit higher degrees, warmer temperatures, 
then I think everybody would like to have a sip, even if it's a shorter run to what, between three to maybe eight kilometers. Um, so that's something that I do really miss. Now, let me continue my little run um, through this very nice countryside. And I'll get back to you with the interior later. Uh, and now let me flip it the other way around. Because in this way, it's a bit more logical. <laughs> I left to about, I think, four days ago. That was about one meter of water here. So I'm happy that I can do my safe trail run of it. And you can see the bounciness. And it rubs on my lower back. Now I'm wearing three layers. What would happen if I was wearing only a t-shirt? Now, out of the wind, and we will see it immediately that there is a lot of stuff that's left from the water when it disappeared again. Lots of wood, and I saw some guys cleaning up all the plastic rubbish that is here, which is absolutely super that they do this. Now, let me put the thingy somewhere over here. And maybe on a different spot. Let me use some of that wood to make a, a little bit of a thing out of this. Now, what is the case is that when I take it off, let's not make the mistake to keep my headphones in there, is that it's got a back. You know, it is, it's sort of softish, but I don't like these rough edges. And also this one, it's, it's quite hard. Um, but now, let me put it on its back. It's got a sort of waterproof zipper, which is good. I'll open it for you. Um, that's my puff, in case I get a little bit chilly. But you will see now what is in there. Um, that's where my laptop is. It's the big one. It just barely fits. So I would not drop my backpack in this case on the corner because it might break, but this one fits quite neatly. There's some more stuff to put in. There's another, another mesh thing you can put some stuff in. And this is where, in this case, I put a towel. Um, it's nice in there. And what you get from I have run boxes as well. They've got a lot of accessories. Um, that you can use together with the pack. If you are a smart running commuter, then you know the overall quality, how it's built, it's quite nicely. Let me put that one in there again. But again, no hydration or bottle possibility, which I really think it's a miss. You know, because if you don't use this one for running, um, what might happen is that if you just use it for commuting with a train or bus, then you really want to have that mug or bottle somewhere on the backpack. And here you see the, in my opinion, totally useless load lifters for a pack like this. It's just not necessary. It only raises the costs. What I do like is there is some reflection going on on some parts, but on the main back, no reflection whatsoever. So if you are a runner at night, you probably should wear a vest and you need to put a light somewhere on it. Now, let me continue my run. And I probably my headphones will be very, very dirty in the mud. Oh. Yeah, like I said, in the mud, mud in the ears now. Oh. Let me tie that a little bit more neatly underneath this one. Would have been nice if there was something like a guiding system also on the 
right shoulder strap to do this, but I can pull this in a little bit. One of the things that I always notice when a pack is not really good fixated on um, on my back is that when I start running, I've got this jacket getting more backwards all the time. And that means that this, I need this for the wind protection, that it gets closer to my throat and it doesn't feel that comfortable. And with this pack, I've got this all the time. So I have to pull it underneath here to get it back in order again. But after a few hundred meters, it's killing my throat again. So now, back home. <laughs> Now, let me get my favorite sweet. That's what's nice about pockets. Where did I leave it? Bananas! Mm. And on the background. It's that big river, the river Wow. You might see it. Now I thought I made it, but there is another crossing that I need to do. And it's gonna be chilly. Let me find the most narrow spot where I might be able to go through and see how deep this actually is. I'm not sure if this is very wise to do. But otherwise, I will have to go all the way back and I'm not doing that twice. So, that was some soak legs. Ah. Let the journey continue. Oh, that's chilly. Sorry. got home of course the pocket 2 was totally empty because I've been running for about 2 hours and 16 minutes and um, in between the pocket 2 was on for a long time so now I've taken a little shower went into the hot tub first um, and now I'm home again and I really like this because look this is how my shoes look like now this has been a proper trail run <laughs> one thing that I was not able to do when running because I could not get to it is the other thing that I love a lot, and this is my other treat, it's a bounty. Wonderful for energy. Now, overall, do I like the IM Runbox backpack? Not really. It's quite well made. But it's not very well designed in my opinion. For example, the load lifters, the position of the pockets on the sides, the total lack of the possibility to carry something to drink, like a beverage. Um, but as a sort of a suitcase design, it's it's quite nice. So I can imagine that if you travel on buses and airplanes and also run. That this can be a backpack that's maybe convenient to you. There's another thing that I should show you. Um, bear with me one moment. Because maybe this says it all. I hope you can see it. But it is the clothes folder. And it tells me how I should fold my clothing 
to keep it neat and tidy and put it into my backpack. Well, I'm very sorry I don't do this when I'm using a backpack, but then I'm never into the office. So that was what I had to tell you about the I am Runbox backpack. I would not buy it, but I can imagine that for some people there is really a purpose. But there are, I think, better backpacks if you want to carry stuff from home to work and from work to home that are more stable and especially that also have got the possibility that you can still breathe and never have got this blocked feeling of what I called the belt, the belly belt. Because I've never seen something like this and I don't like it. Now, um, if you like this video, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video. Um, and also, if you are looking for maybe the manufacturer of the IM Runbox, then it's in the description, of course, together with a lot of other stuff. Enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao! And this was just a quickie. And now I'm going to finish this one. Yummy! Mm. I like.